So uh, first things first, man, tell us, like, you got to introduce yourself, your name, and where you're from. Sure. My name is Elizabeth Rose Carroll. I go by my middle name, Rose. I'm from Woodlawn, so I'm from 62nd and Drexel. I've been all over the city. I've been uh, the village. I've been in Pilsen, and currently I'm in Rogers Park. So, yeah, I've been all over the city. Okay, man, all over the city, 62nd and Drexel. So that's what's up. So like you, you, you born and raised there, like you went to Chicago public schools, like walk me through, like grow yeah. me up, grow me up. Give me yeah, the story. Yeah. So i um, born and raised in Chicago. I uh, grew up and lived there until I was 18 on 62nd and Drexel. I went to grammar school at Andrew Carnegie and that's on 61st and Dorchester. Went there until I graduated eighth grade, salutatorian. I went to King College Prep uh, my first two years. And that's on 44th and Drexel, I think. Okay. And from King, I transferred to Shy Arts, which is an arts high school that was in Bronzeville at the time. I think now it's in Humble Park. It's gotten so big. And I graduated from Shy Arts in 2013. Yep. And after that, uh, that's when I started leaving the city. That's when I started getting out of Chicago. Okay. So now, like, 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 like back up just a little bit. So let's just pretend like I'm not from Chicago. And I'm thinking like, all right, man, 62nd and Drex, so is that the birds? Is that where the, they drink tea and crumpets there? Like, what, what was it like? What was it like growing up there? Terrible. It was so terrible. It, it wasn't too bad because I had my family. I, have, I grew up with a really big family. Um, I have four brothers and two sisters, and all of us went to Carnegie. We all went to the same grammar school, but Woodlawn is right in between um, High Park and Inglewood. So Inglewood is pretty familiar it's pretty known for being a violent neighborhood in Chicago um Hyde Park is known for being an affluent black neighborhood right now it's where the University of Chicago is at um so I grew up kind of in between those two um so I experienced a lot of in between those two and that's just the environment that's the neighborhood that I've known since I was young and growing through uh grammar school that wasn't a great neighborhood either um, but you couldn't tell from like driving down the street, you know, there's Apostolic Church of God right there, two blocks away um, on the corner, but it's right down the street from High Park Academy, which was a terrible high school at the time when I was in grammar school. So fights all the time, fights every day. It just wasn't the best place to be around. Mm, yeah. so, as a kid, I experienced a lot, but I wouldn't change the way that I grew up. I wouldn't change it at all. It made me too into right, you, you strong, girl. Like, hey, we can change it. Now, now. Look. So then, so they're like, right. So boom, you said you graduated high school, right? You graduated while you, you, you killed the game and then, uh, went to college. I did. Okay. Um, I went, to, I went to a couple of colleges actually. Okay. Um, I went to my first, my freshman year in, in college, I went to Missouri. I went to a college called Lindenwood university. And because I was um, a dance major when I was at Shy Arts, I ended up being a dance major, uh, at Lindenwood, okay. but that opportunity did not turn out the best for me. I ended up having a bad experience with the department head. And I ended up leaving the university over like some racist comment that she made that I just was not okay with. And we tried to like hash that out. We tried to make that work, but it just was not working out. And I ended up leaving the university, took a semester off. And then I ended up going to college at Malcolm X uh, College off of, where's that? Van Buren? Yeah. So West Loop-ish. Like UIC Taylor area. So so back up real quick. So so like so what when you what did you want to be when you grew up? Like you was like man, you come out of high school, you like I want to dance. Like like what what did you want to be? I wanted to be a choreographer. I wanted to be a commercial dancer. I wanted to be um, on tours. I wanted to be with a company. I really wanted to dance with Deeply Rooted because that's a black dance company in Chicago from Chicago, and that's really where I wanted to be. So I took a summer intensive with them. And it was the most intense like dance program since graduating from Shy Arts that I had ever been a part of. And I really, really loved it. But at the time, um, I couldn't afford it. I had worked that whole semester after I had come back from Lindenwood in Missouri to afford to be able to pay for the intensive. And after that, I was broke again. And I just didn't even know what to do. So I had to go back to school. I thought my only route was like going back to school, get a degree, make some money and then start dancing again like my whole purpose was to start back dancing again gotcha. so what you said you started working some jobs what what, what you work at i worked at family focus i ended up going through a program that gave me a temporary job 
with family focus and there I was doing a lot of like um, organizational stuff like administrative work filing sending emails making phone calls which turned into a full-time position because they really liked me and I ended up being a dance instructor and an administrative assistant with a couple of different resource coordinators through family focus so family focus was like a nonprofit organization that made after school programs for elementary schools and underprivileged neighborhoods so Working with Family Focus was something that I really wanted to get back to because I like the idea of nonprofits creating these programs for elementary schools that didn't really have any resources. All right, so you, you're giving back at this point. So while you working with Family Focus and then, you know, you're like trying to get back in school, you know, you, you got programs that you you helping out multiple ways, trying to help back the community. So then what? Like what, what happened? After that, I was at Malcolm X and I started getting active, like socially and physically. I started, I joined the volleyball team there and I was still working, doing dance and I was still in school trying to figure out what I wanted to do academically. And dance kind of just slipped away from me at that point. I was really into my studies and I was really into volleyball and they were both like really strenuous. And I think by the summer of 2016, because of budget cuts, family focus had let me go. So that summer I had graduated from Malcolm X, but I also lost my job. So I was unemployed for the entire summer. Didn't really know what to do, had no money to go anywhere. And that's when I started working at the Nike store on Michigan Avenue and with Foxtrot, which was a retail market um, that I ended up working with for years. So after graduating from Malcolm X, I just started working two jobs because I felt like I didn't have any jobs. So now I had to put in the extra work to make up for what I was lacking. Damn. Two jobs, working two jobs. How many hours were you working a week? Like 50, 60 hours. 50, 60. How much was you making a year working 50, 60 hours? You remember? No. Nike, I was making like $10 an hour and Ooh. I was making like 15 So I think it kind of like leveled out, but I didn't have any kind of work-life balance. Mm. You know, I didn't, I wasn't doing anything but working, going home, going to sleep. So. None to show. So, th so then what? After Nike... I quit because I got promoted at Foxtrot to general manager, but I also wanted to go back to school. I wanted to get my bachelor's because I had only had my associates from Malcolm X. So I went back to school at Northeastern in Albany Park, uh, so northwest side of Chicago. And um, I started studying anthropology with a minor in linguistics. And doing that and working as a general manager was so stressful. It was like the most stress that I've been under in a really long time. And because I had been working with Foxtrot for a while, I had continued to drop classes. I felt like if I didn't quit my job, then I would never get my degree. And I really wanted to get my degree because I felt like I had put so much work and effort into it. It wouldn't make any sense if I just let it go now on top of the money that I had already put, put towards it. So I ended up quitting Foxtrot, finishing my degree in December of 2019, and then COVID hit. So I didn't even use my degree. You know, I just had a degree and just didn't have anywhere to, uh, anywhere to put it. And at that point, it was like, I have been doing so much in so many different areas. And um, as a graduation gift, my sister had actually bought me a, uh, she had bought me a class to get a bartending license because she thought that if I knew how to bartend, that's one trade that I can make my own money no matter what was going on. I could you know, take this class and I can go bartend somewhere or start my own local business, something like that. Um, so in 2021, I started bartending. I started serving um, because no place else was hiring. Like nobody was looking at my resume. Nobody was reaching out. I just wasn't getting any hits back. And then I think, what year is it? It's 2021 now. Towards the end of 2021, after quitting bartending, because I hate bartending, I signed up for rework. <laughs> so I hate bartending. Like, man, I got that. How, how'd you find it? Like, who told you about it? Dustin had told me about it a while ago. Mm. I was like, oh, that's nice. That's cool. Like, I'm glad that, that you found something that you really like. And I think through conversation again with Dustin, and after knowing that my close friend had started the program like a month before that, she had just started telling me about it, Priscilla. I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just go ahead and like see what's to rework. All right, all right. So then you you get into the program. 
what's the hardest part of what, what what's like the part where it's like eye open i'm like oh my god like what's the what's the hard part what what if anything did you take away the hardest part for me was probably um going into rework not knowing anything at all being having to leave like my ego outside of the door because i felt like i had experience like i have work experience i just need the resources to be able to put me in the position that i really want to be in really being able to just let myself learn i think going into the classes like with an open mindset especially come in the way that I did. I think because I came in in the middle of a cohort. I was really confused as to how things were supposed to be moving and what I was supposed to be doing, what my place was, if I was missing steps, if I was moving too fast, if I should know things before I you know before I actually take another step just because as a person I felt like I've always been a perfectionist. And I think that through life you kind of have to be okay with not knowing and be okay with failing and getting back up. So that was a hard part for me was coming in not knowing and being okay with not knowing and um, allowing myself to learn and to take constructive criticism and to take that with me whenever I did start interviewing or whenever I was talking to the people, really feeling like I could be myself genuinely because in other avenues of work, I felt like I had to put on the front. I felt like I had to be somebody that I wasn't in order to get where I wanted to be and learning that through re rework and having to tell myself like it's okay to just be myself and I'll get what I want and I'll get what I need if I'm okay with that myself till yeah fire fire so man so did, did it work out yeah I'm <laughs> great I feel great now all right what, what you do now like what what, what 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 you what you do now um December 6th I started with DocuSign as an MDR so that is what I am doing now. Congrats, girl. A month in almost. Celebrate a month. Pop bottles. All right, I'm with you. Right. And uh, how, like, how, how, how you like it? I mean, so you talked about while you was working 60 hours a week before. And I know you're still relatively new there, but like in comparison, like, you know, is it a comparison? Man, when I was working at my other jobs, I always felt like I was overworking. I always felt like I was doing too much and not getting enough credit or not getting enough money or... There weren't enough perks or it just wasn't enough. And I was doing a lot that I felt like I had to prove myself for. And coming in, and I was just telling Glenn this, coming into working with DocuSign, like the first week, I felt like there were so many up that I was waiting for the shoe to drop, the other shoe to drop. Like, this can't be everything that comes with working with a company like this. Like the PTO, the, you know, random we're covering you for lunch and you get two weeks off for your winter break and everything that I'm learning too is, is brand new. And I feel like there's room for me to grow. And I feel like I can finally make a plan for myself, for my future, because I feel like the people that I'm working with are really looking to help me grow, to help me develop and my career, whether that's with this company or not, but as an individual, as, as somebody that's in my role and that wants to do more. And I understand why, some people are so happy in life because they have good jobs that support them this way, that they can have a healthy work-life balance, you know, that they don't have to put in 60 hours to get the money that they want, but still feel unfulfilled. Like, I don't want that for myself. So having something like this feels like it's too good to be true. And I'm trying to let myself enjoy it for what it is, because it's only been two weeks. Hey, only been go, go ahead and enjoy it, girl. Come on, you got to soak it in. Go ahead and take some vacation time to yourself. Uh, good yeah. stuff good stuff so now we got, got two more questions for you so we got this uh phrase that we use at rework uh is get this work this mantra we use it you'd be seeing it we, uh, so we say it relatively often get this work get this work get this work uh what does get this work mean to you get this work means um if there's something that you want out there go out and grab it don't wait for it to come to you don't let life happen to you you have to go out and get what you want and don't feel like it's not out there for the taking. There are so many different opportunities. There are so many different ways for you to be able to develop and grow as an individual, as an employee, as an employer. There's just so much out here. And I think that people really just don't know about it. So having a program like Rework that gives you all these resources, you have to come get it. It's not coming to you. You have to come get the work. Love it. Love it. Final question or statement question. Uh, so now... We about to start another cohort and uh i need you to tell somebody 
the 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 future you that was in your shoes working 60 hours a week and is scared to get out her own way she applied for the cohort i need you to deliver a message to her uh what you gonna tell her and whatever you tell her, you have to end it with get this work so like she she just like you she worse than you in fact i got somebody i got somebody that like she is she like i got this girl in this class she works for you he like in her way in her way in her way and now she's going through this like scared to fail just like she going through it she kind of entitled she feel like i got this experience i don't know why i'm not getting a job like she's going through that right now and so i need you to get her that i got we got a minute i need you to get her a pep talk like Right before this interview, right before this first cohort day one start, get her a pep talk and tell her when, when, however you end it, how you end it, you got to say like, girl, get this work. We got to end it with get this work. All right. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Let's go. Leave your ego at the door. There's no room for not being able to be open and learn all the tools that you need to succeed. There's no room to, to bring in what you think could make you successful or how you think you know um, the route to, I don't know, like just be open, be ready to learn, be ready to take in everything that's being given to you. There are so many different people throughout this program that are willing and ready to help you learn because they've been in the same place that you've been in. We're all looking to to be better. We would not be here if if we weren't looking to get more money or get more knowledge or expand on what we think we want for ourselves. What you think you want for yourself is so small to compare to what's really out there for you. You just got to start from the beginning. You just got to start from nothing, uh, pen and paper, and be ready to get this work.